Hello, my name is Matt Rabel, and I'm a developer advocate at Okta. What I'd like to show you today is how to secure a microservices architecture that was built with Spring Boot and Spring Security and Spring Cloud. So let's get started. So the last tutorial, the last screencast I did, showed you how to build a microservices architecture for microbrews with Spring Boot. And it's basically just using Spring's Eureka server from Netflix, a beer catalog service that has a number of beers in it, and then an edge service which filters out those beers. So at the bottom of that tutorial, there's a link to how to do it with OAuth, or how to secure it with OAuth. So this one is from February 13, 2018, but I just updated this for Spring Boot 2 today, um, so should work great. Uh, this is a diagram of what it actually looks like, and once you add OAuth 2 in there, we're going to be talking to Okta, but the rest calls are going to go through uh, Spring Security, and Fane and Hystrix um, are already in there from the last tutorial. So you'll start by cloning the aforementioned uh, completed project, but I, I just did that in last screencast, so I have all the code here, and it's up and running, so I'm going to skip that part. Um, to create a forever free Okta developer account, You'll go to developer.octa.com and sign up. I actually already have one configured. And if I were to log into it, you could kind of see what's going on. And I'll, I'll show you how to create a new application. So it tells you to go to Applications. Then you go to Add Application, you click Web, Next, and then you'll basically put 8081 in. Um, you can just leave that one. That one doesn't really matter that much. Um, this is the one that matters. So 8081 login, and then you'll just have authorization code, which is the default, and then you'll click Done. I already have one set up, so I'm not gonna not gonna bother with that. But the one thing that is important is that on your authorization servers, you can add the roles or the groups that the person in is in as claims, and those will get translated to Spring Security authorities. Um, so that's done here. I have one name groups and one name roles, and that's just because um, I've worked with some applications that expect uh, different names. Um, so in this case, I'm just going to say groups or roles, and to show you what it looks like. Um, you have a regex and dot star. So um, that's how you basically include your roles in um, an ID token or an access token. And then Spring Security handles the conversion from that role into an actual Spring Security authority. Um, so the edge service is where we're actually doing the filtering of our data. So if I were to go to localhost 8081, good beers you'll see that I have a list of just good beers. And if I went to um, 8080, this is our beer catalog service, it gives a whole bunch of beers. And we've filtered out Budweiser, Coors Light, and PBR because I don't think those are exactly great. So to actually secure the edge service, um, let's start with that. So I have it all opened up in IntelliJ, and you'll need to add two dependencies. Spring Boot Starter Security and OAuth 2 Auto Configure. So we'll just go to where there's a nice little blank space here and add those in. And then we'll also add Zool routes to our application resources. And so right now, if you were to go to localhost 8081 beers, you wouldn't see anything. But if you went to beer, catalog, service beers you would so I'm just kind of shortening those up so you can hit beers directly and then I'm going to add a path for home so that hits a controller in the beer catalog service that will display and prove that you actually you know have authenticated and it can read your user information I'm going to open up application.properties in the edge service and add those routes in there and then in Edge Service Application, I will add the Enable OAuth 
to SSO annotation, which basically configures single sign-on with OAuth to my application. And once you add that annotation, Spring Security expects a number of properties to be configured. So these start with Spring or security.oauth2.client, and it contains my URL uh, for my tenant, dev158606. Um, if you're not logged into Okta and you're reading this tutorial, it will actually show your Okta domain instead. So put those in my application.properties, and then I will need to fix the your client ID and your client secret to match what I have in my Okta tenant. So I'll log into my Okta tenant, and I'm going to use one of my pre-existing applications. So I'll just have, I have this jhipster microservices one already configured. So I'll go ahead and go down to the bottom, make sure it's got 8081 slash login in there, copy that client ID and the client secret. And that's it. I should be good to go. Oh wait, I need to enable a resource server on the Edge Service application. So I'm going to actually copy this whole class. And what this does is it basically makes it so Spring Security looks for an authorization header to be passed in. And as long as the JOT is valid, it will go ahead and allow you to authenticate. At this point, the Edge service is configured for OAuth and protected by Spring Security. And so the next step is adding Spring Security OAuth to the Beer Catalog service. So in the Beer Catalog services palm.xml, you'll need to add the same dependencies you added to the Edge service, as well as one for Timeleaf. And you'll add the same properties in application.properties. And so one way to do this is actually you don't have to put all of these properties in your application.properties. You can set them as environment variables. And this is definitely recommended for production because you don't really want your client secret to be stored in your GitHub repo or in whatever source control system you're using. You usually want secrets to be hidden. So in I have a file, Okta. Dot env that you can see in this file I actually override those properties and set them based on information that I have so this will allow you to actually have empty application dot properties without defining the OAuth properties and if you were to go to production this is what you would use this is what we would recommend but for the meantime it's it's kind of easier just to see what they look like so I will copy the ones from my Edge service and put them in Beer Catalog service. I'm going to create a home controller in this same project that basically displays the user's information from the principal. And the reason I'm doing that is to show you that that jot that's propagated from the Edge service down to the Beer Catalog service does have the user's information in it and you can see that that propagation is working. So this controller here, you can see it just reads from the principal and uh, takes all those details and stuffs them in a map and then returns a user object. So to display that, I'll create a home.html template that basically lists through all the various attributes that are in a user object or in that OAuth2 authentication principal. And then this project will also need a resource server to look for that authorization header. And at this point, you still need to configure the various services 
to be OAuth enabled per se. So for the Fane client, we need to create a interceptor, a request interceptor that will add the authorization header to that request. So here's the code that you can use for that. Create the user fain client interceptor in the same package as Ed Service application. And you can see how it just grabs the token from the security context and stuffs that in the request template header, grabbing the token value. And you'll need to register that interceptor as a bean in the edge service application or in any configuration class that you have in your, your project. And you'll also need to add two properties to your application.properties to basically enable Hystrix and allow it to use the security context. So that's the fain.histrix.enabled equals true and histrix.shared security context equals true. So you just put those at the bottom here. And now we can verify our edge service and our beer catalog service are communicating with each other. So restart that beer catalog service and restart the edge service. And once everything's restarted, we could go to 8081, good beers, and we should be redirected to Okta, see a login page, and be prompted for our credentials. So we'll click on this link and open up that good beers endpoint. And it looks like we're already logged in, so I'm going to open an incognito window and go ahead and hit. 8081 good beers and you'll see we're redirected to Okta type in our credentials and that works we're still getting an empty array list I think that's because the beer catalog service hasn't quite registered with Eureka so let's uh, let's try the beers endpoint okay so that's working and good beers mm, one more time there we go. So now it's pulling those in and we're authenticated and everything's working. So that's great. Um, now let's see if that home endpoint works. We're getting a 500 error there, so that's kind of strange. Let's see what the stack trace says. It says it's in the home controller line 18. If we navigate to that class, what did I forget? Oh, it's right in the tutorial there. Don't! Basically, uh, it's working with the Fane Interceptor, right? That Good Beers is working, talks down to that uh, beer client. But for Zool, we're not propagating the access token. So you need Spring Cloud Security as a dependency in your palm.xml to do that. So this is in the Edge service. You'll paste that in there for Spring Cloud Security, and this will propagate that jot and then restart it and restart the beer catalog service. And now you can go to 8081 slash home. As soon as everything's up and running, and voila! Now we're seeing the roles that are in that ID token as well as all the other information. The logout button doesn't work, um, but that is a uh, an issue that I've talked to the Spring team about and haven't figured out a solution yet. So the downstream service actually 8080 is not protected at this point. So if I'm going to go to localhost 8080 slash beers, you'll see that it doesn't make me log in. So for home, it gives that error. For beers, it lets me through. So this is a different behavior in Spring Boot 1.5 versus 2.0. In 1.5, Actuator would register its own web security configurer. And with 2.0, Actuator is like disabled by default. Um, so you can configure your Actuator endpoint so they're exposed 
and then create a security config to protect them. And that will allow you to restore the behavior that you had in Spring Boot 1.5. Another way to do it is just by using enable OAuth to SSO. So if you put that on the beer catalog service application, it'll redirect to Okta and have that similar functionality. So I'm going to put the management endpoints web exposure include into my application.properties, and then I'll create this security config that basically says, hey, you have to have an admin role to view those endpoints. So now I can restart the beer catalog service application and it will be protected with basic authentication. So now if we hit localhost slash or just 8080 you'll see now it's protected. In the last tutorial I showed you how to create an angular UI to talk to this beer service, this good beer service and show those now what we'll do is go ahead and integrate Okta's sign-in widget to the Angular client. And this will basically allow you to authenticate on the client in the single page application and then pass that access token to the server and get the list of beers that way. So you can take that same client that you registered and just make sure it has implicit grant type allowed and then this will all work. So I'm going to go ahead and go into the client service here and, uh, and add the Okta sign-in widget using npm install. Let's see, it uses Okta sign in widget version 290. And then in the styles.css, we'll add the CSS files needed for the sign in widget. And then I'll create an Okta.service.ts that configures the widget, specifies the base URL, specifies the client ID, and the authorization parameters, for instance, the token types that it wants, the scopes that it needs, as well as methods to get the widget itself and the ID and the access token. So once you create a service, this is using Angular 5, you'll need to register it in the app module. With Angular 6, uh, things changed a bit, so you don't need to do that as much anymore. Um, I'm going to go ahead and grab the client ID and put that right here. Then register in app module.ts. Doesn't seem to be resolving that import, so I'll just paste it in there. And then in the beer service, we'll need to actually grab the access token from that Okta service and put it into an authorization header. You could also use an HTTP interceptor to do this so it would basically configure it for all your HTTP calls but I think this is a little more straightforward and just easier to understand in the beginning. And then we'll need to make that Okta service a dependency in our constructor. And notice the headers is immutable, so you can't just do headers.append. You actually have to reassign it to headers. And then this is a mistake I always make. I forget to actually add it to the HTTP get. So if you don't do that, then it won't work, and you'll be stuck trying to figure out why. Why doesn't it work? And then we can modify the app.component.html to have a div that can basically render that sign-in widget and to show the user's information after they're signed in, and basically say, hello, how are you? And uh, if you wanna log out, here you go, you can log out here. And 
and in the app.component.ts you'll need to make some changes to basically detect if the user is logged in or not so we'll, uh, we'll put those variables in there and then the constructor has that octa service um, change detector ref is used to basically detect when some state has changed outside of angular and you trigger that and tell angular hey you uh you should go and you know check everything is correct again so that's where this uh, this Octa sign in container matches what's in the HTML. Uh, the get user method we still need to add, so copy that from our tutorial. And we're just going to grab the claims out of the ID token and create a user with that using the name, email, and username. And then when this app component initializes, we want to see if the user is actually aligned or signed in. So we'll implement on init and it'll use the, the widget to go and see if there's an active session and then to log out we'll call the widget sign out method. And then reshow the form. So this change detector ref is also needed in the beer list component to basically trigger it to go and fetch uh, the beers again after you've authenticated. So if you open up beer list component, you'll add a change detector ref. Import that. And then right after you set the Giphy URL, go ahead and add it in there. And now we can verify the authentication works. So uh, start up the client using npm start or yarn start, whichever you like. And open up localhost 4200 check for any console error since it doesn't render and then try an incognito window that usually works okay so now we're seeing the form and we could type in some valid credentials and we're actually logged in and we see part of our beer list let's try that again Nope. Hmm. Oh, there's an HTTP error response there, you see. So the pre-flight is invalid. So it's basically saying that, hey, it doesn't recognize our core's header. So we need to go into our edge service. This is actually a problem that you see with, uh, with Spring Security. Once you've added that in, it doesn't honor those cross-origin annotations and you actually have to add a filter in that has a higher order precedence and will basically allow that cross origin request to happen so if we look down here there's a filter registration bean that configures things and so I'm just gonna basically allow all origins um, but you could also change it to just allow you know, localhost 4200. So make sure you get the, the servlet based stuff since we're not doing web flux here and import the class. Make sure it's from spring. And then I'll, I'll add a suppress warnings because that's the, the easy thing to do. And set it to unchecked. And now that warning will go away. And so now we can restart the edge service application and we should see our list of beers. So localhost 4200. Log in with valid credentials. And it looks like it's working on the right. I mean, it made some requests. Try refreshing.
There we go. Woohoo! So there you have it. You've built a robust microservices architecture. You've secured it with Spring Security OAuth. Very nice. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial of developing apps with uh, Spring Boot and Spring Cloud and Spring OAuth. You could also deploy this to Cloud Foundry. I've got a deploy.sh script that automates everything. Um, you will need to go and adjust your Okta app to have a new login redirect URI that points to your production URL and then everything will work. The source code for this tutorial is on GitHub under Spring Boot Microservices Example. It's in the OAuth branch, so make sure and check out that branch. So if you're interested in learning more about the future of Spring Security, uh, Joe Granja did a great talk at Spring One last year in 2017, shows you how to basically log in with OAuth 2.0 with Spring Security. And, and that's very similar to what you saw here. It's just the configuration properties are a little different. Um, I also wrote a couple tutorials on doing the same thing with JHipster and Ionic for JHipster. So I'd invite you to check that out. And uh, you can learn more about Okta and its APIs at developer.okta.com. Thanks for listening, and I hope you have a wonderful day.